Hab keine Angst. Oh boy, what a crazy episode. After what seemed like a moment of peace, everyone was shocked by the sentinel attack on Genosha. So many of our favorite heroes and not so favorite characters, looking at you Madeline, passed away without even putting up a fight. So is it final? In this episode, let's find out what really happened to Eric Lenscher, aka Magneto. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. What happened to Magneto in the episode? Let's go over the hard to swallow part. Yes, Magneto likely died in the episode. How and what exactly happened? Well, let's start with a quick synopsis of the episode. After the last episode's focus on Storm and Forge, the fifth episode deals with two parts of the story. The press interview at the X-Men mansion and Genosha's long-awaited entry into the United Nations. Unfortunately, according to nobody's expectations, the Genosha event takes a rather dark turn. What started as a grand gala quickly turned into a torn war zone as a sentinel attack devastated the young nation. Many mutants died in the attack, not to mention many other unnamed mutants and humans alike. Cable arrives at the timeline to warn his mother Madeline about the impending doom, but he's too late. The gargantuan sentinel appears out of thin air and destroys all it deals Team's threats. As grim as they may be, I'll quickly review its confirmed kills and list them in the order of events in the episode. Banshee is incinerated by the Sentinel's beam attack when he tries to save the mutant Marrow. It is too bad that Marrow could not use her skeleton morphing powers and died at the same attack. Moira McTaggart, Squid Boy, Dazzler, and Sebastian Shaw were all killed off screen, later confirmed at the episode's end. The Morlock leader, Callisto, is shown passing away on a stretcher similarly. Much to the disappointment of many fans, including me, Madeline Pryor is killed in the first wave of the attack, seemingly leaving the love triangle between her, Scott Summers, and Jean Grey unresolved. Or was it resolved? In a rather messed up way? Magneto dies a true hero's death, protecting the Morlocks. He created an electromagnetic bubble to protect the mutants from the Sentinel's beam. In hindsight, this wasn't a good idea, as the Sentinels seemed to have classified Magneto as an essential target, and he just endangered others near him by his presence. The monkey's paw curls as many Magneto fans wished to know about Magneto's Omega mutant status. It is confirmed one more time, albeit at the cost of his life, the Sentinel Beam kills Magneto after he can no longer project the EM barrier around him. Before it prepares to leave, it broadcasts a harrowing message. Omega level threat eliminated. Leech likely died as well since he was holding on to Magneto. Magneto had reassured a young mutant in a German phrase roughly translating to do not be afraid. The Morlocks, Ape, Erg, and Tommy were also protected under Magneto's electromagnetic dome, meaning they probably died when the dome broke under the intense attack. Gambit, my favorite, sacrificed himself to protect everyone else. It is excruciating that he did so to preserve his unrequited love interest robe. As she went against the Sentinel in a rage, Gambit spectacularly approached the now returning Sentinel, but it impaled him with a thin metallic arm. He then projected his kinetic energy through the Sentinel, eventually destroying it. He later passes away in Rogue's arms, confirmed by Rogue. The scene where Rogue touches his face mirrors the scene where Wanda touches Vision's face and Wanda Vision. Both the grieving women say, I can't feel you. How many times has he died before? Honestly, there isn't much of a silver lining in how the episode ended, but I still hope for Magneto. I mean, he wasn't shown to have died on screen. Moreover, death is not a permanent thing in the Marvel multiverse, and the fact that a mutant with a unique set of powers, Leech, was right next to him. So how many times has Magneto died before? I'll list his notable deaths next. The big one, the Resurrection of Magneto comic art. A group of mutants known as the Five used their powers in conjunction to create a system to resurrect dead mutants. That's right, it's a respawn system, not unlike a video game save state. As messed up as it sounds, a celestial named Uranus found the Five's actions blasphemy and the principles of life and death. How so? The system relied upon backup copies of a mutant's consciousness, which would then be uploaded to a clone body. Uranus proceeded to attack the mutants and, in the process, ripped out Magneto's heart, a la Mortal Kombat fatality style. Believe it or not, that is not the most metal moment in the series. What comes next is easily the most metal thing Eric has pulled off, pun intended. He survives without a heart by using his powers to pump his blood, albeit for a while. Unfortunately, he finally dies in the second bout with Uranus, prompting Storm to do something. She's further propelled by the visions in her dreams where she sees Magneto surrounded by five of his helmets. She approaches none other than Adam Brashear, better known as Blue Marvel. 
Adam builds her a portal which is probably not much of an effort given his intelligence. Portal to where you ask? The Scarlet Witch created a realm exclusively for mutant souls called the Waiting Room. To storm surprise, the room is quite empty as many mutant souls have decided to move on. After she goes through a series of trials, she's judged by a powerful entity for worthiness. Passing that scene with Storm, the cosmic issue ends on a disturbing cliffhanger, with Magneto shown with rivers of blood flowing out of where his eyes were supposed to be. There is a list of names behind him and an uncontrollable feeling he's coming back, perhaps corrupted or devoid of his soul. Apart from the latest iteration of Magneto's death, let's talk about the other times he's died. Avengers number 53 shows Magneto falling to his presumed death, and X-Men number 63 of the late 60s reveals he survived a fall into the explosion. In that same issue, Magneto is shown to find a way into Savage Land and seemingly dies when the place is engulfed in flames. To no one's surprise, Namor found him alive but wounded in Fantastic Four number 102. In X-Men number 3 of the early 90s, an, an orbital base named Asteroid M crashes into Earth and Magneto decides to go down with it. Two years later, Uncanny X-Men number 304 revealed that Chrome's remarkable powers shielded Eric and saved his life. New X-Men number 115 of the new Millennium shows a similar scene to the episode we're discussing. A sentinel attack on a mutant sanctuary known as Genosha takes millions of lives, one of them being Magneto. It is later proven false when Magneto resurfaces in Excalibur. Number one, X-Men number 150 shows a brutal sight of Magneto beheaded by Wolverine. As expected, it was actually an imposter named Quan Yin, told in X-Men number 157. The latest iteration was in Uncanny X-Men number 19 where the mutant Psylocke kills Magneto, whose body is found later by Elixir. Elixir revives him with his powers. In summary, yes, that's a lot of deaths, and our hero Eric is familiar with death or near-death experiences, much to his misfortune. Does that mean that he could come back in X-Men 97? Why not? Let's explore how he could have saved himself or even saved by the Morlocks near him. Did Leech save Magneto? Alright, so the apparent elephant in the electromagnetic bubble is Leech, a relatively uncommon hero. Leech is not a prominent mutant like the other X-Men, however his skill set and unique powers make him stand out from most other mutants. The way he speaks is somewhat unique in itself. So what are his powers? Leech, as his name suggests, primarily has the powers of negation. He can project a neutralizing field that disrupts additional neural pathways of the human brain, resulting in anyone within the field to temporarily lose their abilities. This includes mutants mutations, extraterrestrial powers, magic, or any other powers requiring thought within his neutralizing field. It has been shown that his field can extend up to more than 30 feet in radius. While Sentinel is purely speculation, it is possible that the Omega-level threat mentioned in the Sentinel statement could be Leech. Against my point though, the organization called One classified him as a low-level threat. This is the Marvel multiverse we're talking about. There is a good chance of Leech in the X-Men 97 universe being much more potent than his comic counterpart. A power of negation isn't to be taken lightly, and it's easily possible that Leech somehow saved Magneto from the attack. Leech initially survived M-Day, the dreadful event that took away most mutants' powers. After those events, he was mind-controlled to negate Absalon Mercator's powers, and he partially successfully negated him. Mercator is an Omega-level mutant whose powers are unmatched, and Leech's ability to negate his power is miraculous. So, is there something that Leech could have done to protect himself and Magneto? Unfortunately, there are no references to Leech going against a Sentinel that doesn't stop Leech in X-Men 97 to be the first one to do so. What about Magneto? Is there something that he could have done to prevent his fate? While it's likely that he died, there's plenty of evidence that Eric has a penchant for coming back from all kinds of deaths. In this particular instance, what could be the ways that he could have survived? As if his vast array of electromagnetic powers wasn't enough, Magneto can use his powers and in an unknown way to generate portals. This is a relatively rare phenomenon, only ever shown to be used once. So, could Magneto have created a portal to escape his imminent death? Perhaps, but there are other answers. Let's explore them briefly and explain why portal creation could be the most likely candidate. The most obvious solution would be to use his command over magnetism to travel underground, safe from the Sentinel's beam. Another would have been to turn himself invisible by bending the light around him, evading Sentinel detection, though I believe portal creation was the best possible answer because of how easily it would save them all from the beam.
Marvelous verdict. What do you guys think? Some fans truly believe that Magneto somehow survived and saved Leech in the process. Others, like us, believe that Leech was involved as well. Now, what about the Leech haters who claim that Leech accidentally negated Magneto, indirectly killing him? I'll leave you to figure out your take on all of this. As always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.